and welcome to my next tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about Tinkercad and all the different sections that will help you navigate through Tinkercad. So let's start off at the home page. So when you first log into Tinkercad, a teacher should give you a code and you should have your own name that's a combination of different names and, or letters and numbers. But when you get in here, you're going to have a choice of 3D circuits and code blocks. Most likely your teacher is going to ask you to start with 3D and you're just going to hit the create button. Now, my, mind you, I have a bunch of stuff here, but if it's a new new you know, time or first time you're doing this and everything's brand new, you're not going to have anything here except for the choices of 3D circuits and code blocks. You're going to hit create. And again, it gives you those three choices. You hit 3D design which I'm going to do right there. And it should take you to your first Tinkercad page. Now, what you have here is about four or five different groups of shortcuts and symbols. So let's talk about this first one here. To really is illustrate it though, I'm just going to drag one of these shapes here in the center so you can see what it does. Now over here, these right here help you look at an object either close up when you zoom, zoom in by pressing this plus button or zoom out by clicking the minus. Um, all right, let's talk about this weird one. Every once in a while, a student will click on this and like, ah, it looks weird. It will, because it's called the orthographic or flat view. So if I click this, mind you, let's look at it from the side. I'm right clicking to do this, by the way. If I click this, look what happens to my shape. It looks kind of weird, like it's been flattened and that's exactly the point of that one so you can see it flattened. I've never used it this way, but some people have. I'm going to click it again and it's going to go back to the, you know, 3D view. And this one, let's say that you are completely lost. You, you've you lost the shape. You don't know where anything is. And you're like, uh, I'm completely lost. Well, the home button will take you to your shapes. There it is. See, just like how you started. And it'll always go back to that exact same one. Even if you just turn it like this, it'll go like that no problem see now this is another way of looking at your shape you can just keep on dragging once you click on a side you have to click and hold it though you can't just click on it once but there's a shortcut if you want to look at it from the right click on it and now you have the right view so it's like perfectly in the center but if you want to look at it from the top click the top there it is it's amazing what this can do all right so that is how you can view the objects on your screen by the way, this place is called the work plane, and that's what we're always looking at when we're working. I don't really work with these right here because I find shortcuts to be much faster than these right here. So control D will make a duplicate. See, look at that, a duplicate. Now you can't really tell that it was there until you moved it. So I'm gonna do it again, control D. Nothing happened until you try to move it. There's your duplicate and I hit delete to make it go away. Let's try something else. What is this? Uh, oh, paste. But let's copy something. Control C, nothing happened. I hit Control V and there it is. When you hit Control V, it moves it a little bit to the side for some reason. I don't know, but it does help in case you, you know, you're know you lost or something. And these will undo something. So let's say you, you mess this up and you're like, oh no, I didn't want that. Well, you click there. Perfect. It is the way it started. No problems. Now here, you need to listen to your teacher and how you want to be naming things. In my class, I would prefer it be your first name and then the name of the object, box. I don't know, just making that up. So the reason I do this is because when we're printing something, I want to know who's printing it and what it is. So there's that. Over here, we have to select an object in order for these things to appear. Now, mind you, you see how not all of them appear, but these things let you manipulate the object. Let's bring another object over here so you can see what happens. So if I click and drag over two things, well, now I have both of them selected. And now this one shows up and this one groups things. Look at that. Now that is considered one object. See, click away, drag it over here. It's one object. But you know what? Maybe I don't want it to be one object anymore. So I will ungroup them. Huh? See, now it's two objects again. Pretty snazzy, right? But let's say, um, let's focus on here. Let's say I want this one 
to be like perfectly aligned right there because they should, right? And it, it looks like it is there, but I don't know 100%. So let's make it super obvious that it's not aligned. There's a shortcut here that'll let you do that. So I select this and there's a tool here called Align. I click the letter L and it says, well, do you want to align it this way? And it gives you an idea what it would look like. You see the orange outline? That's what that is. But if I want to click over here, it will align it that way. So before you click, you can see what it's going to look like and make your life a lot easier. I'm going to click it here and now I know they're aligned. And if I wanted to, I can make this one go over there. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to use on on my computer keyboard, the arrow keys. So look at your arrow keys and you can just make it move like that. See, some people like the <clears throat> the use of the arrow keys because it, it's more concise and exact. It's amazing. Um, now you can't really tell what this button does until you use an object like this. Uh, let's rotate this that way you can see that. Okay, so I just rotated it. And we're going to use this mirror button. By the way, I prefer the shortcut, so letter M does the same thing. I want this object to face that way, so I click that one. There, now it's facing that way. And cruise, I believe is what it's called. Cruise lets you determine which plane you're going to be using when moving this thing. Eesh. Right there. So it, again, it lets you land the object there. Now, that means that is the plane it's going to be. So if I click the letter D, now that becomes the bottom. And wow, it's so confusing sometimes. So I'm going to click the letter D again and click down here. Yeah. It, some of these do require some practice given, but when you're watching the tutorials, the shortcuts and the when to use something will help you out a lot. Now, um, all right, let's talk about these for a second. Let's say you want to import some, I don't know, text or an image. You can do that here, but remember it only accepts STL, OBJ and SVJ. So, Make sure you can you use this button in order to bring objects in here. Now, let's say you're done and you want to print this. Well, you can always hit export and choose. I usually choose STL, but if your teacher says to do one of the others, do the other the other ones up to your teacher. So I click STL and I save it so that I can print it later. Now, if you want to share this with your teacher, you want to hit send to. You scroll all the way to the bottom and invite. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to create a link. You click on it and then you copy it. That link you would share to your teacher's email or if they have a Google form, you can paste it in there and your teacher will be able to access your design. Now, for those of you that like to cheat, your teacher can find out how long it took you, what what you did the first time you, you opened this and what you did the second time you opened this. It's really cool. So don't cheat. Now, here's the basic. Well, the shape library is all of these right here. And there are some amazing things in here. Um, actually, and you can mess with that one and you can, but check this out. You got vehicles and now mind you, some of mine will show up, but they may not show up on yours for some reason. I don't know, but you have creatures and characters. I recommend you play with this when you get a chance. But now that we're here, let's look at this one right here. When you click on this particular shape, look what happens you get the settings for that shape. You click on the circle or the cylinder, you have different settings. You look at the, you click on the square and there's different ones there. So you can manipulate these by doing different or changing the settings essentially. Maybe you want the top to open up like that. Different settings, pretty good. Now something that I change almost every time when I'm designing is the snap grid down here. The snap grid is, is telling the shapes how far they can move. So let's look over here. This cylinder, by the way, I'm using the click wheel to move this forward and back. I get to wherever my mouse is pointed and I zoom in with, with the click wheel, that's where it's going to go. So look, I'm going to use my uh, arrow key and I'm going to go left. If you notice, it went from this line to this line. I'm going to go backwards by one. So all these squares are one millimeter squared, one millimeter, two millimeters. So if I want to change the design or the how far it goes, I can go to 0.5 and let's zoom in here. Ready? It should go to about right there. 
and see halfway and all the way to one millimeter. However, if you want more precision, it'll go one time by 0.1. So that means I'd have to go 10 times to reach it over here. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Math is still mathing. That's amazing. So this right here, if you want to go with the ultimate precision, you turn it off and let's look what happens when I use my arrows to move these things. I'm clicking and it's barely moving. Yeah, that's going to take forever. But this is only for precision when you want it to be just a little bit this way or that way. That is how you would uh, change that. And I use that all the time. Okay, so here's another thing. When I click on this, I want you to notice that there's an arrow here and I put my mouse over that, that appears. There's an arrow down here and there should be one more arrow, but you can't see it until I change the angle. There it is. See, there's one, two, and three, and this is to rotate an object. So if I rotate this way, it'll move in increments of 22.5. See? It makes it easier if you want to do 90 degrees because you just go there and there it is. However, this only works if, you're, if your mouse stays inside that thick blue circle. If I move my mouse outside of the empty blue circle, I can go by one degree at a time. And technically, I can do this. Click and put 24.5. So I can do use decimal numbers in order to get even more precision. And that's great. Now let me undo this with Control Z. There it is. Another thing you can do with this is you can, now this one's nowhere on here, but if you click, if you move this up with the black arrow, it's great. It's different from stretching it with the white box. Black arrow, white box. Black arrow, okay. So there you go, you get that. But here's a shortcut. I like to click the letter D and it'll go all the way down to the bottom here. Nice. This one here, if I click the letter D, it'll go all the way to the bottom. This, I find it very useful indeed. So I think that is enough for you to succeed with Tinkercad with, you know, just your basic intro projects. But watch more tutorials in order to get more advanced stuff. So have a great day.